everyone. During this time, I've listened to the fellowship of the Church of Almighty God and have read many of Almighty God's words. When it comes to the inner truth of the Bible, the relationship of God and the Bible, and how we should treat the Bible, as well as the true meaning of faith in God, God's management plan to save humanity, how to experience God's work, how to seek truth and attain salvation and perfection, and the right way to practice our faith. About all these things, I began to understand. Amen. Amen. What Almighty God expresses is the truth and is the voice of God. Amen. It is the word of the Holy Spirit to the churches. Amen. I believe Almighty God is the return of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord has returned? This is so great. Elder Liu, has the Lord really returned? Yes. It's really true. The Lord has returned. The Lord really has returned. Impossible. I can't believe it. If this is true, why didn't I see him? Please settle down. Please settle down, I'll explain it. Today, I've invited preachers of the Church of Almighty God to talk to us, to help us, seek the truth, and examine the true way so we can hear the voice of God, be brought before his throne, be purified before the judgment seat of Christ, and attain salvation. Amen. Amen. Welcome them. If you have any questions, please ask any time. They will fellowship and answer them for us. Okay. okay. Brother Gao? Mm. Everyone, thanks be to God for giving us this opportunity to gather together and fellowship. Thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. Feel free to ask questions at any time. Almighty God's word can resolve all our difficulties at any time. Amen. Amen. Brother Gao, in our last fellowship, we learned about the true relationship between the Bible and God. The Bible is the Bible. God is God. They are different, and they can't be thought of as the same. Praise God. We should all hold God to be great and worship him, obey him, fear him. We can't use the Bible to replace him. Right. Man has blind faith in the Bible, seeing the Bible as equal to God. This is simply blasphemous to God. Yes. But many people might be confused by this. Since the Bible's a record of God's word and man's testimony, why can't we receive eternal life from reading the Bible? The Bible is a testimony to God's work and has been so beneficial to mankind. Through reading the Bible, man comes to acknowledge God as the creator of all things. He comes to learn of God's omnipotence and deeds, how great they are. Amen. So since the Bible contains God's words, why is the way of eternal life not found in the Bible? Good yes. yes. Right. Yes. Why? Everyone has yet to understand this aspect. Brother Gao, please fellowship with us on this. We yes. 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 Please, please, fellowship with us. please fellowship with us. That's right. Seeing as the Bible is so important to man, why doesn't it have the way of eternal life? Yeah. Yes. Why? You say the Bible can't give eternal life, so why do I have some doubts? Please discuss this with me. I do wonder that. You know, I also wonder this. Please fellowship with us. Please, let's hear it. Brothers and sisters, with the Bible, we understand that God is the creator of all things. It lets us see his wondrous deeds. That's because the Bible is a testimony to God's past works. It is a record of his word and work and the testimony of man in the first two ages. So, of course, the Bible is important to our faith. Yes. yes. It's true. If not for the Bible, how would man come to understand the words of the Lord? How else could man know God's deeds and begin to develop his true faith? Yeah. If we don't read the Bible, how else would we find the testimony of all the saints throughout the ages obeying God? So reading the Bible is essential to practicing faith, and no believer of the Lord should go without reading it. You could say he who goes astray from the Bible could not believe in the Lord. Yes. Right. Yes. That's 
The saints throughout the ages have verified this fact. No one denies the value of the Bible when it comes to practicing faith. So then, saints through the ages all agreed the Bible is very important and should be read. Some would say reading the Bible and praying are essential. Just like our two legs, both are needed. Mm -hmm. oh, yes, 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 of course. course. But the Lord Jesus has said, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. Amen. Yes. Well, some people are confused. They think that since the Bible contains God's word and man's testimony, reading the Bible should give man eternal life. Right. right. Yes. Why is it the Lord Jesus said eternal life is not in the Bible? Yeah. Why did he say this? What is that about? Actually, it's not that hard to understand. Just as long as we understand the inside story of God's work in the age of law and age of grace and what they each achieved, we'll come to understand why we can't receive eternal life in the Bible. First, let's look at the age of law. In this age, Jehovah issued laws and commandments for man to follow. His words were a guide for humanity, which was newly born. These words did not involve changing man's life disposition. So God, during the age of law, aimed to make people follow and abide by the laws and commandments. And although these words were truth, this truth was superficial. During the age of grace, the Lord Jesus' words and work focused more instead on redemption. His words were about redemption. And they taught people they should confess their sins and repent and refrain from evil doing. And they taught how to pray and demanded that man must love the Lord with all their heart and soul, love their neighbor as themselves, be tolerant and patient, and forgive others seventy times, seven times, etc. These are all included in the way of repentance. Yes. Yes. So then, by reading the Bible, man understands the work of God in the age of law and the age of grace. They learn that all things are created by God and learn how to live on earth and how to worship God. They understand what is sin, who are God's blessed and who are cursed by God. They come to know how to confess their sins and repent. They learn humility, forbearance, and forgiveness, and how to take up the cross and follow Lord. They learn about unlimited mercy and compassion of Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen and learn that only by coming before Lord Jesus in faith will they enjoy His abundant grace and the truth. Amen. Amen! The words and work of God during the age of law and the age of grace as written in the Bible were the truth spoken by God according to His management plan and the needs of mankind at that time. These truths caused man to adopt some good behaviors, but they were unable to solve the root of sin to change man's life disposition, or allow mankind to attain purification, salvation, and perfection. Thus, the words said by the Lord Jesus in this age can only be called the way of repentance, not the way of eternal life. Amen. 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 Oh, we the Lord Jesus gave way of repentance, not way of eternal life. You know, it all makes sense now. Then what is the way of eternal life? Well, let's hear his answer. Brothers and sisters, so what is the way of eternal life? The way of eternal life is the way of truth that lets man live forever. The way that allows man to cast off the binds of his own sinful nature, change his own disposition, and gain the truth. The truth as life. Break free of Satan's influence and become compatible with Christ. It allows man to know, obey, and revere God, so as to never again sin or oppose or betray God. Only with this effect can it be called 
the way of eternal life. Amen. Amen. Man dies as a result of sin. If man attains the truth as life and resolves his sin, then of course God will bless him with eternal life. Thanks be to God. So then, only by receiving salvation in the last days can man enjoy the way of eternal life that God has given us. Amen. Thanks be to God. I finally understand why the way of eternal life isn't in the Bible. As it turns out, the Bible only records God's words and work during the age of law and the age of grace. Is not the way of eternal life God expresses in the last days? Of course you're right. Without this fellowship today, we might never have realized. Thanks be to God. The fellowship is clear today. Thanks be to the Lord. This fellowship has been a great help to me. The Bible is merely a record of the first two stages of God's work. So if we only read the Bible, we cannot gain eternal life. Yes. The Bible can't give eternal life. Of this, there's no doubt. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thanks be to God. But we believe by following the Lord, we can achieve it. Right. The Lord's own words back this up. The Lord Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him, a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen. 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 This passage is the Lord Jesus' promise. Yes. The Lord Jesus can grant eternal life. His way is the way of eternal life. Amen. However, you testify that Christ of the last days brings us the way of eternal life. I don't quite understand this. We are all followers of the Lord Jesus. Why is this not enough to gain the way of eternal life? We can gain the way of eternal life this way, right? My brothers, please fellowship on this issue. Yes. 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 Let us know, please. He's right. The Lord Jesus is Son of Man. Is He not Christ? The Bible says, He that believes on the Son has everlasting life, and he that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God stays on him. Didn't Lord Jesus have the way of eternal life? By believing in the Lord Jesus, we should then also have the way of eternal life. So why do we also have to accept the words and work of Christ in the last days? I'm also unsure of this. I'd like to learn more about this. All right. Everyone, the Lord Jesus is God become flesh, is God's appearance. The Lord Jesus said, And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. All these words are truth. They are fact. Lord Jesus is God become flesh. He has God's substance and identity. He himself is the way of eternal life. Amen. Amen. All he says and does is a manifestation of God's life. All he expresses is truth and what God is. Amen. So, Lord Jesus himself is eternal life and can grant the way of eternal life. Amen. He can bring the dead back to life. By believing in Lord Jesus, the one true God, we can receive eternal life. This is known fact. Amen. There is proof in the resurrection of Lazarus. Proof that Lord Jesus can give us eternal life. And he has this authority. Amen. Then, why did Lord Jesus not grant way of eternal life in the age of grace? Right. Why is that? Because Lord Jesus had to be nailed to the cross to redeem mankind. Not for the work of purification and salvation in the last days. The Lord Jesus' work of redemption only pardoned man's sins, but it did not rid man of his satanic nature and disposition. So yes, with belief, man was pardoned for his sins, but his satanic nature was never cleansed. 
Man still sins in spite of himself and betrays God. Isn't this undeniable? Indeed. Hmm. Having said this, let's be clear on something. Lord Jesus' work during the Age of Grace paved the way for the judgment of the last days. So that, after Lord Jesus completed the work of redemption, he promised he would come again. The Lord Jesus once said, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Spirit of Truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Amen. From the words of Lord Jesus, we can see, only when the Lord comes again will he express all truth that saves man. Here, the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. These truths are exactly the truths that Almighty God of the last days expresses in purifying and saving mankind. Amen. They are the words the Holy Spirit says to the churches. Amen. Amen. Also, the way of eternal life which God in the last days gives to mankind. Amen. Amen. That is why the Lord's followers were unable to obtain eternal life in the Age of Grace. Amen. Oh. I see. Only the returned Lord Jesus can give the way of eternal life. Yes. yes. This fellowship made it so clear. Yes. Thanks be to God. Yes. Praise the Almighty God. The Lord Jesus said, And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And the Bible also says, He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. However, the Lord said this to testify that he is God's appearance, and only he can grant man eternal life. The Lord Jesus' promise that those who believe in him would never die is a testimony to God's authority. God himself is the way of eternal life, Amen. and he can grant us eternal life. Amen. Amen. That's not to say man receives eternal life only upon accepting Lord's work. Right. I trust everyone understands this. Yes. But many religious people think that as long as their sins are forgiven, they'll enter the kingdom of heaven. Is there basis for this found in the word of God? No, no there's not. There right. Lord Jesus never said anything like that. Why don't we really think about it? According to our imagination, as long as our sins are forgiven, we can enter the kingdom of heaven. But why did Lord Jesus prophesy that he would come again? Yeah. And why did he tell his disciples so many prophecies, so many parables? These are things he is going to accomplish when he returns. Can we believe in the Lord for years and still not know this? We need this fellowship to understand. If man only accepts the Lord but not his return, that's an issue. Isn't this betraying the Lord? It's true. No wonder Lord Jesus said, Not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in your name have cast out devils, and in your name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Amen. Amen. Yes, and now, the Lord's words come completely true. If you accept the Lord Jesus, but don't accept his return, do you really believe in the Son? No, we don't. This is betrayal of the Lord. True believers in the Son refer to those who not only believe in the Lord, but accept His return, following Christ to the end. Only they can gain eternal life. Amen. Those who believe in Lord Jesus, but reject Almighty God, are people who betray Lord Jesus. They believe in the Lord, but because they don't follow God to the end, their belief is for nothing, and they fail. Yes, of course. Yes, the Lord Jesus has determined that they are evildoers, 
because they only acknowledge his name, but they don't accept his return. He had said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Amen. Amen. Those people who are condemned and cast out by the Lord, those who only keep his name, how can they gain eternal life? They can't. They can't. It's impossible. Yes, it is known they'll gain nothing. They will descend into hell and suffer. This is proof of God's righteous, holy disposition. Don't you think that's the case? Yes. 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 Brother Gao was right. We once read the Lord's words, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I always thought belief in Lord Jesus gave man eternal life. But after this fellowship, I understand more now. Yes. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Not only must we believe in him, we must also accept his return. Then we'll have eternal life. Amen. Amen. Now I see how important it is to accept the work of the returned Lord Jesus. That's right. We can't miss this opportunity. That's right. right. We can't. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, we all know this fact, that even though man accepted Lord's redemption and their sins were forgiven and they were given the right to pray to God and enjoy His grace and blessings, it can't be denied that man is still being controlled by their nature of sinning. Yes, yes. that's right. And they're incapable of practicing Lord's Word, obeying and revering God. Man often still lies and deceives God. Yes. They seek fame and fortune, lust for wealth, and follow worldly trends. Yes. Especially when the work of God is not in line with man's notions, mankind blames, resists God, judges God. These people can't even really repent. So can they obtain the Lord's approval? Oh, Absolutely no. not. No, they How can they gain Lord's approval without repenting? I agree. Though many men are able to testify and be martyred for the Lord, and all have even truly repented, in all honesty, have they been cleansed so that they may attain holiness? No, they no. haven't. Definitely they haven't. Not. So have they truly known the Lord? No. no. Are they rid of Satan's influence and gained by God? No. no, they're not. Right, they are not. This is known fact. This proves the work of Lord Jesus in the age of grace was for redemption, not salvation and perfection of the last days. The words of Lord Jesus in the age of grace were the way of repentance, not the way of eternal life. Amen. Amen. That's why Lord Jesus said that he would come again. The returned Lord Jesus will express the truth and give man the way of eternal life. Amen. So then they can break free from Satan's influence and gain truth as life. And they become men who know God, obey God, and are compatible with him. So they can enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. Based on Lord Jesus' redemption, Almighty God has commenced the work of judgment starting from God's house and has expressed all truths to purify and save mankind. He has revealed God's righteous, majestic, unoffendable disposition. Amen. Judged and exposed man's corruption by Satan. He has unearthed the root of man's rebellion and told man all of God's intentions and requirements. Also, he's told mankind all truths we need to achieve salvation, including the inside story and essence of three stages of God's work and the relationship of these stages, the difference between the work of God and the work of man, the truth of the Bible, the mystery of the judgment of the last days, the rapture of the wise virgins perfecting people into overcomers before the disasters, and God becoming flesh. What is to truly believe in, obey, and love God? How to revere God and shun evil, be compatible with Christ, and how to live a life of meaning, and so on. These truths are the way of eternal life and are all bestowed by God to mankind Amen. in the last days. Amen. The truths from Almighty God are the way of eternal life. Within the religion, that's something we could never attain. Yes, 
So then, if we want to attain truth in life, salvation, and also be perfected, then we must accept and obey the words and work of Almighty God. Amen. This is the only way that man may attain truth in life. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Let us look at the words of Almighty God. Yes. yes. Right. Brother, may we have a book of God's word? Of course. The word of Almighty God. Brother Chen, can you please hand these out? Certainly. We'd like one over here, please. Sister? Yeah, we need some over here. Okay. Oh, thanks. May I have one? There we go. This is wonderful. The word of Almighty God. This is God's word. Please turn to page 1459. Yes. Almighty God says, God himself is life, and the truth and his life and truth coexist. Those who are incapable of gaining the truth shall never gain life. Without the guidance, support, and provision of the truth, you shall only gain letters, doctrines, and moreover, death. God's life is ever-present, and his truth and life coexist. If you cannot find the source of truth, then you will not gain the nourishment of life. If you cannot gain the provision of life, then you will surely have no truth. And so apart from imaginations and conceptions, the entirety of your body shall be nothing but flesh, your stinking flesh. Know that the words of books do not count as life. The records of history cannot be fated as the truth and the doctrines of the past cannot serve as an account of words presently spoken by God. Only that which is expressed by God when he comes to earth and lives among man is the truth, life, God's will, and his actual manner of working. If you apply the records of words spoken by God during past ages to today, then you are an archaeologist. And the best way of describing you is as an expert on historical heritage. That is because you always believe in traces of the work that God did in times gone by. Only believe in the shadow of God left from when he previously worked among man. And only believe in the way that God gave to his followers in former times. You do not believe in the direction of God's work today. Do not believe in the glorious countenance of God today. And do not believe in the way of truth presently expressed by God. And so you are undeniably a daydreamer who is completely out of touch with reality. If now you still cling to words that are incapable of bringing life to man, then you are a hopeless piece of dead wood. For you are too conservative, too intractable, too impervious to reason. Amen. Turn to page 1460. Christ of the last days brings life and brings the enduring and everlasting way of truth. This truth is the path through which man shall gain life and the only path by which man shall know God and be approved by God. If you do not seek the way of life provided by Christ of the last days, then you shall never gain the approval of Jesus and shall never be qualified to enter the gate of the kingdom of heaven, for you are both a puppet and prisoner of history. Those who are controlled by regulations, by letters, and shackled by history will never be able to gain life and will never be able to gain the perpetual way of life. That is, because all they have is turbid water that has lain stagnant for thousands of years instead of the water of life that flows from the throne. Those who are not supplied with the water of life will forever remain corpses, playthings of Satan and sons of hell. How, then, can they behold God? 
If you only try to hold on to the past, only try to keep things as they are by standing still, and do not try to change the status quo and discard history, then will you not always be against God? The steps of God's work are vast and mighty, like surging waves and rolling thunders. Yet you sit and passively await destruction, sticking to your folly and doing nothing. In this way, how can you be considered someone who follows in the footsteps of the Lamb? How can you justify the God that you hold on to as a God who is always new and never old? And how can the words of your yellowed books carry you across into a new age? How can they lead you to seek the steps of God's work? And how can they take you up to heaven? What you hold in your hands is the letters that can provide but temporary solace, not the truths that are capable of giving life. The scriptures you read are that which can only enrich your tongue, not words of wisdom that can help you know human life, much less the ways that can lead you to perfection. Does this discrepancy not give you cause for reflection? Does it not allow you to understand the mysteries contained within? Are you capable of delivering yourself to heaven to meet God on your own? Without the coming of God, can you take yourself into heaven to enjoy family happiness with God? Are you still dreaming now? I suggest, then, that you stop dreaming and look at who is working now, at who is now carrying out the work of saving man during the last days. If you do not, you shall never gain the truth and shall never gain life. Amen. 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 Those who wish to gain life without relying on the truth spoken by Christ are the most ridiculous people on earth. And those who do not accept the way of life brought by Christ are lost in fantasy. And so I say that the people who do not accept Christ of the last days shall forever be despised by God. Christ is man's gateway to the kingdom during the last days, which none may bypass. None may be perfected by God except through Christ. You believe in God, and so you must accept His words and obey His way. You must not just think of gaining blessings without receiving the truth or accepting the provision of life. Christ comes during the last days so that all those who truly believe in Him may be provided with life. His work is for the sake of concluding the old age and entering the new one, and is the path that must be taken by all those who would enter the new age. If you are incapable of acknowledging Him and instead condemn, blaspheme, or even persecute Him, then you are bound to burn for eternity and shall never enter the kingdom of God. Amen. Almighty God has explained the path for us to gain truth and the everlasting life so clearly and told us explicitly what will be the end result for us if we only cling to the Bible and don't accept Christ of the last yes. days. Yes. How ignorant would we be to not accept Almighty yes, God. Yes, indeed. indeed. Yes. Because we have heard the voice of God, we can't cling to the Bible anymore. Amen. We must accept and obey the words and work of God in the last days. Amen. 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 Yes. Now I understand what the Bible means by he that believes on the Son has everlasting life. Thanks, Thanks, be, to Thanks be to God. Believing on the Son also means believing in the second coming of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Accepting all the truths of Christ of the last days. Amen. Amen. Only in this way can we gain the way of eternal life. Amen. 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 Thanks be to Almighty God. Thanks be to God. Almighty God has expressed truths which will purify and save mankind in the last days. Amen. These words are abundant, comprehensive, 
and give all the sustenance we need. They open our eyes and give us knowledge. Amen. Amen. Letting us see Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. Amen. Christ is the way of eternal life. Amen. Amen. The words that God expresses in the Age of Kingdom reach far beyond anything that was said in the Age of Law and the Age of Grace. Yes. Especially as in God's utterances to the entire universe, in the Word appears in the flesh, God makes Himself known for the first time. It is also the first time humankind hears the Creator's utterances to all of man. Amen. This has sent shockwaves through the entire universe and opened the eyes of man. This is the work of judgment before the great white throne in the last days. Amen. Amen. The age of kingdom is when God does His work of judgment, and God's righteous disposition is made manifest to all mankind. Amen. Amen. So, in the age of kingdom, God expresses His word, judging, purifying, and perfecting man. He'll send down disasters. The bad will be punished, the good rewarded. We will see God's righteousness, majesty, and wrath. Amen. Amen. Truths from Almighty God aim to purify, save, and perfect mankind, and are the way of eternal life in the last days. Amen. These truths are the water of life which flows from the throne. Amen. Amen. It's grace. Oh, grace. Thanks be to God. Mm. Thanks be to God. So then, to attain the way of eternal life and rapture into the kingdom of heaven, Man must accept the work of judgment of Almighty God, Christ of the last days. Amen. As well as the judgment and chastisement of His words. Amen. This way, they can gain the work of the Holy Spirit, Amen. understand and gain the truth, and then be purified and be saved. Amen. Only those who undergo God's judgment in the last days are entitled to enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. This is absolutely a fact. Amen. Amen. Therefore, if some continue to hold on to their religious notions, in the end, they will suffer loss. Right. right. The wise virgins focus on the truth and hear God's word, and the foolish virgins keep to the letters of the Bible and their own imaginations. Those men don't hear God's voice. They don't seek the truth. But one day, they'll fall into disaster and they will suffer. They won't be able to escape. Yeah. Those who do not accept Almighty God will all fall into disasters and suffer. God has ordained this. It cannot be changed. Amen. Amen. Those who condemn the work of Almighty God in the last days have been revealed by God to be antichrists in the last days. They will be punished for all eternity and they have lost their chance to ever meet God. Oh, yes, that's right. It is clear the work of Almighty God is to classify man according to kind and bring the age to an end. Amen. Amen. Today, we are able to accept Almighty God's work, and we have received His grace and mercy. We have been raised up by Him. Amen. Amen. We should give thanks to Almighty God. Thanks be to God. Praise God. Praise Almighty God. We should truly thank oh, Almighty God. God. Amen. Amen. I thank God for His grace. Recently, with the help of the fellowship here, I've come to understand the truth. As for God's three-stage work of salvation, substance of Christ, and the source of truth and life, as well as the way of eternal life, all of these I understand finally. Amen. Truths of Almighty God are abundant for us, our full sustenance from God. I know, no matter what difficulties and questions we have, we can always find the answer and resolution in the words of Almighty God. The more I read these words, the more I am sure Almighty God is the embodiment of the Spirit of Truth. Amen. Amen. He guides us to understand the truth in a practical way Amen. and provides for our every need. Yes. Yes. Almighty God is the return of the Lord Jesus Amen. and comes bearing the way of eternal life. Amen. Thanks be to Almighty Thanks God. To God. Praise God.
Praise God. I've learned so much from the words of Almighty God just in the past few days alone. You could say I learned more now than in decades of faith before. Almighty God has opened the door to every truth and mystery and clarified his management plan, mystery of the incarnation, and the inside story of the Bible for all of us to finally understand. Yes. yes. The words of Almighty God have solved so many things for me in faith. Letting Letting me no longer be blind. Blindly worshipping the Bible. But learning the Bible does not have eternal life. Only Christ is the life, the truth, and the way. Amen! Only Christ of the last days can bestow the way of eternal life. And only if we believe in Almighty God can we gain this truth and life. Amen! And now I... I feel very strongly that only belief in God incarnate and experiencing his words and work qualifies as true belief in God. It lets us know the truth, truly understand him and obey him. Amen. In this way, we'll receive God's approval. Amen. Praise God. <laughs>